Hey, Johnny. Why'd you take on this project? I mean, it's just a stupid little mini bike. It's not a stupid mini bike. This here, why don't you let everyone know? It's a know. crash course in motorcycle design. And it was cheap. So you want to build a motorbike and you want to do it from scratch. In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to do a project like this. So I'll cover off the tools you need, the skills I learned, things I would do differently, times to outsource, buy things, or even make them yourself. By the end of this video, you will know exactly what you need to to start your own project like this. First up, the most important part of any plan, and that is setting some goals. So the what. I'll talk about the V4. So I wanted a V4 motorcycle, 350cc, a close ratio gearbox, and I wanted it to use 95% off-the-shelf parts. The reason why, I can't afford a suitor. The RG and the RZ, way too expensive, way too old, and parts are getting hard to come by. Now, is it realistic? I think so, it's a bit ambitious, but the V twin engine was the perfect stepping stone, so I don't think I'm out of my depth just yet. Here's a list of the bare bones essentials you'll need for this project. You're going to need a computer for your CAD software. And next up, you're going to need some measuring equipment, preferably some high quality digital calipers. Minus the donor engine, that is everything you're going to need to begin the design process. So this is a list of all of the major tools you'll need. Not everything. Um, you know, you should be fairly well stocked in terms of hand tools to take on a project like this. A milling machine, CNC or manual, it doesn't matter. It'll just dictate the complexity of your project. And also, the lathe is a really nice to have, not necessarily a necessity. But those are the two main things you will need. Now, I could also add a furnace to that list if you do decide on pouring the casting yourself. In this chapter, we're covering off the parts I selected for the V4 build. So I decided to go with four of these Chinese YZ85 cylinders, but it's perfect for drawing up in CAD and measuring everything for the project. I'm using a GSXR 1000 water pump, seeing as I want the thing to run cool around 50, 55 degrees. And I want to be able to deliver enough coolant around the engine at a high enough rate to make this happen. YZ85 crankshafts is going to use four of these. And these are about hundred dollars each. Next up we have the gearbox. Now this is from a Triumph XC800. I actually bought the entire engine. It had thrown a rod. I got it for $150. Gearbox, clutch, everything. This here was critical in the selection of the YZ85 cylinder, seeing as this paired with a gearbox this close will be an awesome track bike. So that is a massive consideration, is, is your gearbox that you've selected for your project going to work with your cylinders or your power delivery? Also, on that note, there's this awesome resource called Gearing Commander. I will leave a link in the description. It allows you to change the primary ratio. It already has all of the gears preloaded in there, and you can see what the RPM drop will be between gears at different RPMs. This is probably the most time-consuming part of the entire project. Yes, you can do this the old-fashioned way with wooden patterns, hand measurements, and napkin sketches, but that's not what I did, and I can't speak to that. So what I did was accurately measure everything as best I could with digital calipers, a height gauge, and my milling machine as a CMM, and then reverse engineered it and started drawing an engine around all of these known dimensions in Fusion 360. I'd hazard a guess that I already have probably... 40, 50 plus hours in this design, so I can't show you the whole thing in one video. The only advice I have for you with the design is be accurate, be patient, and take a break. If things aren't going your way and you're struggling to find a solution, sing out, ask people for advice, 
but don't be afraid of taking a break and coming back to it. Provided everything went to plan, now it's time to make the thing. For the V4 I'm going to use Lost Foam Casting. I've already used this process with the V-Twin and there is a YouTuber by the name of Kelly Caulfield. He has a wealth of information in his videos and that's where I learnt everything I needed to know on the subject to successfully cast and manufacture a running engine. Enough said on that. Now cutting the foam is going to be the biggest barrier for some of you. So either A, you can do it on a CNC mill like myself, just a garage converted hobby mill or you might have access to a CNC router so lucky for me the local library has a CNC router and it's free to use awesome but for you guys there is either a hopefully going to be something like that near you or b um, you might find people on Facebook that have routers that will help you cut your foam for cheap I would not recommend going out to buy a quality CNC router just to cut out one set of patterns the other pro of making this pattern with a CNC router is now you can machine the entire engine on a manual mill. If you have a digital readout, you can get all of the coordinates and between a boring head and your digital readout, you will be able to accurately position all of the bore locations for the bearings and then you can spot drill, drill and ream all of the holes for the dowels. And the CNC, not required. So once you've made your patterns, it's time to cast the thing. Now I would recommend outsourcing this as unless you've got access to a furnace already, it's a fairly big financial outlay and it is quite dangerous. Enough said on that. If you really are interested in pouring it yourself, definitely check out Kelly Caulfield's videos. Now this is what I'm going to talk about during the manufacture outsourcing stuff. So in a perfect world, you could do everything yourself, but sometimes it's not financially viable. For example, when I made the crank pin for the V-Twin, I outsourced the heat treatment and cylindrical grinding. One, I didn't own a cylindrical grinder. Two, I didn't want to buy a tool post or make a tool post grinder for my lathe. And three, it was only 80 bucks. They did it for $80. I mean, you can't complain. And it came in bang on dimension. So sometimes it's cheaper to just outsource the little things that are going to hold you up. So for the V4 project, I've had someone reach out to me who is going to help me machine all of the custom gears I'm going to need. Um, and that's pretty cool. Although if it came to me doing it on my own, I would probably just outsource having the gears manufactured as I might machine the blanks myself to save on shop labor, but actually cutting the teeth and the hardening of the gears. Yeah, that's just a better job outsourced. So what did I have to learn to take on this project? The most important thing I learned how to do was use Fusion 360. Prior to this, I had dabbled with CAD software, but by no means was I an expert. I could just, I could draw a box. But through trial and error, plenty of tutorials, um, I got to a point where I could slowly draw an engine. If I had any trouble, I would just Google it. And we got there in the end. YouTube is an awesome resource and there are plenty of tutorials around. That leads into the cam side of things. So I have professional experience uh, turning and milling, but not CNC machining. So this was the first time for me, and I pretty much learned everything I needed to from NYC CNC's videos. Old John Saunders, he has plenty of informative videos there that will teach you everything you need to know. What would I do differently? So all of the corners on this engine are where they made it 90 degrees, they're just sharp edges. I'd use an M mill with a corner radius of, I don't know, two millimeters. Um, and that would just make the whole thing a whole lot stronger. So for the next engine, I will be putting radiuses on everything. Also for the next engine, I'm gonna be cutting the foam on a CNC router. It's gonna be so much faster than the old mill. And yeah, I did it because I could, but next time I'm just gonna use a CNC router, get it over and done with way faster. And lastly, what I would do differently is I would heat treat the casting. So this here is a bit of a mongrel alloy. It's um, a mixture of old Honda engines and some other cast odds and sods I had around. Um, and I didn't heat treat the casting. I mean, it machined well, it seems fairly strong. 
it's probably going to fail at some point, but this was just a uh, learning experience. So for the next casting, I'm going to get known uh, stock. Well, I'm probably going to outsource the casting with metal from a foundry, and then I'm going to have the casting heat treated to do away with all of that. That leads into my next point, um, outsourcing. Definitely there is a time and a place to outsource things. For example, if you don't have a tool, or you only need it once, or you don't know how to use a tool and it's a fairly cheap service, um, yeah, make sure to outsource. I mean, just talk to local engineering shops. Um, you can talk to people through Facebook. It might be a bit more or a bit less reliable, but yeah, if you heat treatment, outsource it. I mean, yeah, you can get by at a pinch, but it's guaranteed that way. For the casting, yep, sand casting, casting, any casting is pretty dangerous. There's molten metal and not everybody has the facilities. And in of itself, it is an entire setup hobby learning curve. So if you just wanna do without, just get someone else to cast it, make the patterns, set everything up and then get someone else to do the casting. But in all, um, yeah, I hope you learned something. I hope I answered some of your questions and feel free to hound me with questions in the comments if you wanna know anything, um, if I missed anything out. I mean, this might have felt a little bit shallow, but the point of this wasn't to teach you how to use CAD. It wasn't to teach you how to machine. It was just to tell you that you too can do this with some very basic tools and a basic understanding of these skills.